Anjou and Maine, both given unto the French. Cold news for me, for I'd hope the France, even as I have a fertile England soil. A day will come when York shall claim his own, and therefore I will take the Neville's part and make a show of love to proud to Humphrey. And when I spy advantage, claim the crown, for that's the golden mark I seek to hit. Nor shall proud Lancaster usurp my right, nor with a diadem upon his head, who church-like humors fit not for a crown. Then, York, be still a while till time do serve. Watch thou, and wake when others be asleep, to pry into the secrets of the state, till Henry, Surfetting in love with his new bride and England's dear bought queen, and Humphrey with the peers be fallen at jars. Lay hands upon these traitors in their trap! Damn tag, I think we've brought you at an inch. What, madam, are you there? The king and commonwealth are deeply indebted for these peace of pains. My lord protector, I doubt him not, see you woke guerdon for these good deserts. Injurious duke, thou threatest where is no cause. What call you this? Stafford, take her away. Lord Buckingham, I think you watch her well. A pretty plot well chosen to build upon. The king is now in progress towards St. Albans, with him the husband of this lovely lady. Thither go these news as fast as horse can carry them. A sorry breakfast for my lord protector. Your grace shall give me leave, my lord of York, to be the post, in hope of his reward. At your good pleasure, my good lord. Lady that Somerset be sent as regent thither, witness the fortune he hath had in France. If York, with all his far-fetched policy, had been the regent there instead of me, he never would have stayed in France so long. No, not to lose it all as thou hast done. I rather would have lost my life betimes than bring a burden of dishonor home. Enough, good York. Sweet Somerset, be still. Thy fortune, York, hadst thou been regent there, might happily have proved far worse than his. What? Worse than not? Nay, then, a shame take off! Oh, my lord of York! Try what your fortune is. To Ireland will you lead a band of men, collected choicely from each county some, and try your half against the Irishmen? I am content. Provide you soldiers, lords, why I take order for my own affairs. A charge, Lord York, I will see performed. But now return me to the false Duke Humphrey. No more of him, for I will deal with him, that henceforth he shall trouble us no more. And so break off, the day is almost spent. My Lord Suffolk, you and I must talk of that event. My Lord Suffolk, within 14 days at Bristol, I expect my soldiers, for there I'll ship them all for Ireland. I'll see it truly done, my Lord of York. Well, nobles, well, tis politically done, to send me packing with a host of men. T'was men I lacked, and you will give them me. I take it kindly, and be well assured, you put sharp weapons in a madman's hands. Whilst I in Ireland nourish a mighty band, I will stir up in England some black storm shall send 10,000 souls to heaven or hell. And this fell tempest shall not cease to rage until the golden circuit on thy head do calm the fury of this mad bread flow. And for a minister of my intent, I have seduced a headstrong Kentishman, John Cade of Ashford, to make a motion as full well as he can under the title of John Mortimer. In Ireland have I seen this stubborn king oppose himself against a troop of Kern, and fought so long till that his thighs with darts were almost like a sharp quill porcupine. This devil here shall be my substitute for that John Mortimer, which now is dead. In face, in gait, in speech he doth resemble. By this I shall perceive the commons mind, how they affect the house and claim of York. Say he be taken, racked and tortured, I know no pain they can afflict upon him that will make him say I moved him to these arms. Say that he thrive, is his great like he will. Why then from Ireland come I with my strength to reap the harvest which that rascal sowed. For Humphrey being dead, as he shall be, and Henry put apart, the next for me.